Hives are a super common, frustrating, and baffling symptom of poor stress regulation in the body. But when we address the root cause by calming hyperactive histamine and healing leaky gut, we get real lasting relief. Keep watching to get to the bottom of those pesky hives. A few years ago, I met a young woman who we'll call Lucy. Lucy came to me for help because she had run out of options for treating her chronic hives. And let me tell you, she was desperate. Lucy's face would swell up so much that it looked like she had lost a boxing match. Not kidding. She had hive breakouts every day that were triggered by all kinds of stressors, including temperature changes, exercise, her cycle, and sometimes no apparent reason, even though she was on some serious medications. These meds made her groggy and exhausted to the point where she was forced to quit her job and pause her education, all because of chronic stress hives. Most people don't have such severe hive reactions, but that doesn't make the experience less frustrating. It's no fun to feel itchy and puffy, not to mention the embarrassment of red, raised blotches on your face, chest, arms, or neck. And chronic hives have a way of showing up at the worst possible times because of their connection to the stress response system. So if you have hives or if you've had them in the past, know that you're not alone and it's not hopeless. When we finally got to the root of Lucy's hives using evidence-based functional medicine strategies, some incredible things happened. More on that in a few minutes. But before we talk about strategies you can use to relieve your chronic stress hives, we need to understand why they're happening in the first place. Yes, I know that the simple answer is stress, mental, emotional, and physical stress to be specific. But functional medicine folks aren't content with that explanation because we can't always solve an issue by avoiding or reducing stress triggers. Life doesn't work like that. Stress is inevitable. So basing our strategy solely around stress minimization isn't realistic or helpful in my experience. Instead, we have to go deeper with our search so we can address it at the root instead of just band-aiding it. In the case of hives, the first thing we need to recognize is that stress, especially acute or sudden or short-term stress, triggers the release of histamine. Histamine is a protein that we most often associate with itching, redness, swelling, allergic reactions, and other immune system responses. But recent research has found that histamine can also function as a hormone and a neurotransmitter. Histamine is produced by two categories of white blood cells. They're called mast cells and basophils, as well as special neurons in the brain and stomach cells called enterochromaffin-like or ECL cells. Histamine has really important functions in the body, even though we tend to think of it as a nuisance. So it's important to remember that it's not exactly histamine's fault. The real issue is how much and how frequently histamine gets released, as well as which triggers cause it to be released. Let's just say, that folks with chronic hives have very trigger-happy mast cells and basophils. They're overly sensitive to signals that tell them to release histamine, or they're getting a lot of signals, or they get stuck in a pattern of histamine feedback loop, which means they release too much histamine, or <laughs> all of the above. Most of the time, stress hives happen when baseline histamine levels have gotten high enough that a seemingly small thing tips the body over the edge into symptom land. So the hives may seem to come out of nowhere, but typically the root histamine issues have been happening for a long time, just under the surface. I like to use the analogy of water in a bucket. Let's say you have this bucket that represents your histamine tolerance or stress tolerance. It's how much histamine or stress your body can handle before it's filled up. Your tolerance bucket might be big or small, depending on lots of factors, ranging from things that happened to you as a kid, to your genetic makeup, to the foods you choose to eat. As you go about your life, 
Histamine or stress gets poured into the bucket like water, a little bit or a lot at a time, gradually filling it up. Now remember, we're not just talking about emotional and mental stress, though that certainly plays a big role in filling up our bucket. We have to also consider the physical stressors that drip, drip, drip into our bucket every day. Things like sugar-sweetened beverages, pesticides on our veggies, our unbalanced microbiome, and the sleep-disrupting screen time we overindulge in. All of it can gradually fill up our bucket, leading to more stress and more histamine. In this analogy, we also have a spigot or release valve at the bottom of the bucket that we can open up to drain some of that stress and histamine out. Activities like taking a walk in the woods, talking with a therapist, eating broccoli, taking probiotics, eating histamine-reducing foods. These strategies help make room in our bucket so it doesn't overflow. Because that's what hives represent, an overflow of that tolerance bucket. Hives happen when you've reached the limit of your tolerance, often slowly over time, and the symptoms spill out over the sides of the bucket. So when we're trying to get to the root cause of something like stress hives or panic attacks or autoimmunity or hot flashes or whatever the specific symptom might be, we need to figure out what's adding to that stress bucket and how to open that release valve wider so that we don't overflow. Sometimes over time, we might even be able to stretch and widen that bucket to increase our overall tolerance. But typically, I find that balancing the input and outflow of the bucket to avoid spillage is the fastest way to lasting relief. Enough about buckets for now. Let's get specific to hives. So we know that stress, mental, physical, and emotional, triggers histamine release. So figuring out what those stress triggers are, again, making sure we're remembering all three categories, and addressing it at the root is where we start. One of the most common physical stressors that causes or contributes to hives is poor gut barrier integrity, commonly known as leaky gut. Here's a crash course on leaky gut in case you're unfamiliar with this term. The cells that form your intestinal wall are all lined up side to side, creating a barrier between the outside world of your digestive tract in the inside of your body, your bloodstream in this case. This gut barrier is super important for keeping the right things out and letting the right things in. But more often than we'd like, the connection between the cells is disrupted or broken, creating what you might think about as little leaks in that barrier where stuff can get into the bloodstream that doesn't belong there. And guess what happens to stuff that doesn't belong in our bloodstream? That's right, the body sends the immune system over to take care of it. And that immune response often results in histamine release, along with other immune compounds called immunoglobulins. When your gut barrier isn't strong, you're going to see more of an immune reaction, even to the point where the body becomes sensitized against itself in the case of autoimmunity. But that's another topic for a different time. The main takeaway is that leaky gut can contribute to your overall histamine burden and can act as a stressor on the body, resulting in chronic hives. It fills up your tolerance bucket little by little until it overflows, causing the swelling, itching, and redness that we know as hives. So assessing and addressing leaky gut is one way to relieve stress hives. And there are lots of functional medicine strategies for sealing up that gut barrier, because leaky gut is at the root of so many symptoms, including thyroid problems, hair loss, IBS, joint pain, the list goes on. Here are four strategies I like for healing and sealing leaky gut. One, remove foods that create inflammation and leaks in that gut barrier, like gluten, dairy, hydrogenated oils, sugar, alcohol, and caffeine. Number two, replace digestive acids and enzymes that help break down the food you eat. 
Remember those stomach cells that produce histamine? Their job is to signal the release of gastric acid, which is crucial for digestion. Since most people with hives use antihistamines, they need to supplement stomach acid production in order to adequately and completely digest. Number three, rebalance the healthy microbes that live in your gut using specific strains that are studied for gut barrier integrity. I'll put my favorites in the show notes for you. And number four, repair or seal up those leaks with compounds like immunoglobulin G, L-glutamine, deglycerized licorice root, and others. Again, I'll put my favorites in the show notes for you. In functional medicine, we call this the 4R approach. Another approach involves stabilizing the immune cells that are releasing histamine. Remember how those mast cells and basophils can get sort of trigger happy, which means they go wild with histamine release after every little stressor or for what seems like no reason at all? Thankfully, certain food-based compounds and herbs can help calm the frequency and quantity of histamine that's released from these cells, which also helps reduce your histamine levels at baseline. Vitamin D3, quercetin, stinging nettle, and perilla seed extract can all be helpful for modulating histamine release and response for a variety of hives triggers, not just stress. Check out the link in the show notes for my favorite blends of these awesome histamine busters. I bet you're wondering what this looks like in real life. Well, remember Lucy? Just four weeks after we implemented strategies like these, aimed at stabilizing histamine-producing cells and sealing up her leaky gut, she was completely hive-free. Her mood was lifted, she was bubbly and engaged and energetic, and bonus, she didn't look like she'd just been mugged. <laughs> Already. This is why I love a functional medicine approach to chronic hives, because it includes consideration of the root triggers of stress, mentally, emotionally, and most importantly, and most often missed, physically. By taking a deeper look at all the different stressors on our system, you can actually fix what can be fixed, remove what can be removed, and also accept what can't be fixed or removed. And because we understand the why of the chronic stress hives process, we can also interrupt the pattern by stabilizing those histamine-releasing cells, which has many other wonderful health benefits. It's a better strategy than you just need to reduce your stress or just take Benadryl for the rest of your life, don't you think? Thanks so much for watching. If you're looking for more functional medicine solutions, be sure to check out my channel and subscribe for updates. And you're always welcome to leave me a note in the comments. I do my best to answer your questions. And I've got lots of histamine relieving goodies for you in the video description. So be sure to click on those links for more information. As always, if you found this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. I know it seems like a little thing, but it really does help spread the word about functional medicine. So thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.